Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you're watching Fishing 411. In this week's episode, we've traveled all the way to Michigan's Upper Peninsula, a place called Keweenaw Peninsula. Stick around, because on this week's episode, we're going after some monster trout. The setting for this week's episode was Michigan's Upper Peninsula, and more specifically, we were in the Keweenaw Peninsula. Now, all of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is beautiful, but the Keweenaw Peninsula is actually our crown jewel in Michigan. It is absolutely gorgeous, and the fishing is just as good. We're at a place called Standard Rock, and if you haven't heard of Standard Rock, it's a big reef system that's located right out in the middle of Lake Superior. In fact, depending on what port you run from, uh, like for example, if you ran out of Marquette, Michigan, you'd be close to 50 miles offshore. So it's literally in the middle of Lake Superior. And this reef complex comes up, it's about five miles long, and it's world famous for holding high quality lake trout. And that's what we're after today, high quality lake trout. You know, so we're finally out to Standard Rock, and it's been kind of one of those bucket list trips. I've been lucky enough to be out here once already in my life, but it's one of those trips that a lot of people have they just gotta do. You know, there's big lake trout out here and there's lots of lake trout out here. It's a long run and it's one of those trips that we've had planned all year long. Really looking forward to putting a big lake trout in the boat. Jakers. First you know, this one, is huh? first one and you know what? This is just so cool. I actually saw that fish surface and I already cast it and I reeled really quick to where I saw the boil of that fish surface. <laughs> and he was right there. That's actually a quality fish too. Dude. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dad. That's a real nice fish. Give me a second, I'll get the net together for this you This crystal clear water is so cool. I mean, right now we're in 28 feet of water. I can see the bottom. There's another two big trout right there, Dad. Either sitting on bottom and I can see them. That's so cool. All right. <laughs> I get this one on the net. I'd like to catch the other one for you, but I think maybe we better just get there this one There were two just laying on bottom there. Okay, I'm just going to lay there a nice light in the net like that, because he's gonna definitely have a little one we're going to want to release. Yeah. You know, that's a start. We ran all the way out to Standard Rock to catch big lake trout. Now this one doesn't come into the category of big lake trout, but it's our first of the trip. So we're going to get this one back, and we're going to go after a big one. We had a multitude of guests on this particular episode. Jake, of course, was teamed up with me and we were fishing in my boat. But Travis White joined us now. Travis White is local, um, has a charter business up here, boots on the ground, really, really knows the fishery. Uh, and of course, one of my old and dear friends, Dale Voice, I talked him in to join us and it wasn't a very difficult discussion to get Dale to come up here and fish with us. Uh, he went to school up here at Tech and so he's very familiar with the area. And uh, as soon as I offered up a chance to come join us fishing, Dale was in. That's a big one right there though. That's a pretty good size one right there. Not, that one's not huge, but this is just a little guy. Can you see that? Dad, you got a rod with anything on it? I'm sorry? Do you have a rod with anything on it? Yeah, I've got, uh, this has got a big heavy jig on it. It's on the bottom right now. Well, oh, Jake's got one. I think, you need, I think they're more, they're on fish here than anything, because I've had a follow every single cast since we've been here. This little baby guy. Once you get out here, you kind of got to get a lay of the land. There's a lot of water out here, and the reef is actually five miles long. There's a ton of water for these lake trout to be living in. So what you can do is you can get a chip for your Lawrence unit, and we just have an insight chip on our graph, and it shows us a little bit more about what's happening down at the depth. 
we can see those contour lines and find where those fish are on those breaks. Once we kind of pick that apart, then we can go from spot to spot finding lake trout. Additional considerations provided by Motor Guide, engineered for anglers. Additional considerations provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait subs. Oh man, this is just so much fun. Whenever you can catch a lake trout on just light rods, light tackle, and a jig, it's one of my favorite styles of fishing. <laughs> when you're catching one on almost every cast, it makes it that much better. <laughs> there we go. Well, if a guy wants to come to Standard Rock and do this, um, you can do it in a relatively small boat. You don't need a big charter boat to get out here, even though it's a long ways offshore. You know, today we're just fishing out of our StarCraft SDX 2050, so it's a 20-foot boat. But I don't recommend you come out here by yourself. Um, what we set up with is uh, we decided to come with two boats. Our buddy Travis White uh, guides up here, and so he's got a 20-foot boat. And, uh, and so with two boats, if something happens while you're out here, at least you've got some security. You know, you've got something that can help tow you in or something of that nature. So um, definitely, if you're going to come this far offshore, you're going to want to go with at least a couple of boats. And uh, it's just for safety. It's not that this is an unsafe run, but this is Lake Superior. Let's face it, and the closest point of land from where we're at right now is over 30 miles away. So that's a good long run. The other thing about Standard Rock is that you have to play the weather, and today we hit it perfect. You look out here and it is just absolutely glass smooth, and that's what you're looking for, that's the ideal conditions. Um, but you don't get these ideal conditions very often. Travis was telling me um, that he figures 30 to 40 days a year is what you can actually run here on calm seas. So in an entire year, there's only about 40 calm days at Standard Rock. That's not very many. So uh, you got to bide your time. Uh, late June, uh, the whole month of July, and the whole month of August is when you're going to find your most stable weather and your best likelihood of getting enough weather that's calm enough to get you to the rock. You know, and the final thing we need to talk about is impending weather. Now, we ran out here today on beautiful flat seas, and I just keep watching the horizon. If we see any indication that there's weather building, we see any thunderclouds starting to come up over the horizon, we're out of here. I mean, like right now. Um, you don't want to mess around with this. The last place you want to be caught in open water is the middle of Lake Superior, and that's essentially where we're at right now is the middle of Lake Superior. So Lake Superior's got some really unique geological formations um, that basically create these underwater pinnacles of rock and they're surrounded by depths from anywhere from 500 to 1,000 feet of water and all of a sudden they come up to less than 100 feet of water and these pinnacles really concentrate uh, life you know, out in the middle of the lake including you know, bait fish and that of course attracts some of the big lake trout here in Lake Superior to hold on the structure. A little resistance on there. Woo, and down to the bottom he goes. That is a classic lake trout maneuver right there. They love the sound. All right, once he turns, let's see if we can get him back up here. That's what you come lake trout jigging for. It's pretty hard to get that sensation with other, other kinds of fish. This is no 20 pounder, but it's definitely a better fish than we've had. He's right here, Jakers. Oh, what a beautiful fish. I'll bring him around for you. Fish, Dad. Hmm. There, there we go. go. Nice they fish, love Dad. They love rolling that blind, don't they? Oh, yeah. He's going to probably tear up my fluorocarbon leader here. Let's take a peek at him. <laughs> I'm only going to keep him out of the water here for a couple seconds because these trout are pretty delicate. And aren't those beautiful? They actually have two strains of lake trout out here. They have what they call Mackinaws that have the nice red fins. Um, then they have what they call fats, which are, uh, well, they have whiter fins and they have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more fat in their flesh. But this one right here is a good example of what you're going to catch when you come to Standard Rock. Well, if you're going to come out here and catch these lake trout, you're going to need the perfect package for a rod and reel combo. And what I found is about a 7 to 7.6 medium action rod and about a size 30 reel does the ticket. I have that teamed up with 10 pound test braid and it also has a leader. Because of this really clear water, I'm taking a fluorocarbon leader and tying it direct to the braid. 
Then I'm tying my jig direct to the fluorocarbon. That combination is going to put lake trout in the boat. Well, it looks like a little bit nicer fish. Maybe Dad. a little bit better fish here. We'll see, Jakers. But uh, again, nice deeper fish. As the sun gets up here, we're just not seeing those fish on the surface anymore. But we are seeing fish down deep. Hey, Jakers. Give him some big head shakes. You can give me a little bit here. He wants to be under the boat, unfortunately. I can't get him to go where I want him to go. <laughs> Here he comes. Oh, that's a nice fish. See, he ate that jig right down, right down his throat. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> that clear water. That's what so we like cool, about lake it? trout right there. There we go. There we go, Dad. <laughs> nice Listen fish. to him. Lake trout like to talk. They're very vocal fish. Lake trout magic. It's standard rock. I'm gonna put this guy right back. We'll see if we can catch him in about this time next year. Like a shot. Off he goes. Now these lake trout, they're schooling fish. So where you find one, you normally find more than one. And if you can see, I actually have one, two, three, there are four lake trout following this one up. Jake, there's our double header. <laughs> there's a double header. Like I said, when you catch one, you're gonna catch a couple more. <laughs> well, mine just, mine just pulled off, that's all right. <laughs> Boy, you talk about a pretty fish. This one isn't very big, but look at the color on that thing. Wow. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Special considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products, and by Eagle Claw Hooks, proudly made in America since 1925. Well, if you spend any time on the internet lately, you'll see that there's a ton of technology that's coming out for fishing. And one of the most common questions I get is if this technology that's coming out is applicable to any kind of fishing situation. And I tell you what, the gateway system that I use day in and day out on the water is so important. What that is, is I have my electronics, my Lowrance electronics, talking to my Motor Guide XI-5 through a gateway system. Now we just went through a group of fish and we caught them. And when I turned around, all I had to do is touch that waypoint and the boat is driving back to the waypoint, literally driving over top of the water that we just fished. This technology that's coming out is extremely important. It's putting more fish in the boat for me, I know it'll put more fish in the boat for you. Well, it's day two of our Keweenaw Peninsula trout fishing adventure. Now, day one, we made the big run. We went all the way out to Standard Rock, and we had nearly perfect conditions for doing that. And it was a beautiful run out there, and the fishing was actually stellar. We went there to catch big trout. Unfortunately, that's not exactly what happened. We caught bucket loads of trout, but for us, most of them were on the small side. Now, today, the wind is blowing a little bit more. No way we can make that run to Standard Rock, but no problem. One of the beautiful things about fishing around the Keweenaw is that there's protected fisheries all over the place here. So we're basically just gonna sit up and fish along the Keweenaw Peninsula. Today, we're looking for a more mixed bag of trout and salmon. We'll see what happens. And five minutes into our trolling morning, we're hooked up. So let me get over on this side of the boat here where I can keep this thing in the back of the boat where I want it. A little too early to tell what we're hooked up on right now because there's a multitude of species here. Man, it's thumping pretty good. That's perfect. That'll be perfect. Looks like a lake trout. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, I'll get him scooped here for you. You want to just? I can scoop him. There we go. Nicely done. All right. Well, it's not a giant dad, but it's a start. We haven't been fishing more than five minutes, so. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> we'll Let get that baby go, and we'll uh, see if we can't catch a bigger one. All righty. Keweenaw uh, basically is surrounded by Lake Superior uh, on three sides, I guess, if you will, as far as the cardinal directions. So we've got great nearshore and offshore fishing for all sorts of trout, uh, lake trout, splake, brown trout, 
um, including rainbow trout, and we've also got all the different uh, Pacific salmon species here in Lake Superior, coho, king, and pink. So we've got a real great mixed bag fishery out here, and a really uh, year-round fishery through the ice as well as open water from spring right through late fall. It is a coho, it looks like it is a coho. Hey, a little bit a interesting here. Pretty nice coho, Dad. Get him in the boat right. here. Well, there you have it. <laughs> That's a little tasty bugger there, Dad. You know, cohos are not the biggest fish in the Great Lakes, but they gotta be the tastiest. That one's gonna go and become a fish sandwich for sure. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fish hawk is called boating. When it comes to open water trolling, we have lots of great options. If we were walleye fishing today and we were going real slow, say one and a half miles an hour, we'd probably be using just the Order Guide XI-5 electric motor for those slow speed trolling applications. We also have a kicker motor back here, so if we're going to go a little bit faster, say in that 1.8 to 2, 2.1, 2.2, .2, we typically use the kicker motor for those types of applications. But today, because we're trolling for trout and salmon and going a little faster, we're actually going to use the E-Tech as our primary power. Now, we can get down to about 2.5 miles an hour with the E-Tech, which is a perfect speed for what we're trying to accomplish. So we have lots of options with us. In fact, we'll probably always have the electric motor down, but today it's not about speed, it's about boat control and just keeping us on course. Man, that board just ripped back, Dad. Oh, it's already released. You kind of got the hot side going here, Dad. <laughs> I, I'll switch, take, I switched my spoons out. Hey, I'll take your fish, though. I'm not, <laughs> I don't I'm, mind you having the fish. That's I'm not, not a picky. <laughs> That's not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, drop another waypoint here since uh, we seem to be on a little cluster of fish here. So. You know what's astonishing to me is not that we're catching fish, it's the water temperature. These fish aren't in salmon water temperature. No. They're in a lot warmer water than I would associate with salmon, so they're obviously got to be here feeding. Yeah, so. absolutely. You see these fish feeding on the surface like this. Now, I have never fished a scum line here in Lake Superior, but I've done it a lot in, in Lake Michigan. And normally when you can find a scum line, you can find fish, and that's exactly that's what we exactly have here. That's exactly what we got going on. You know, the Keweenaw has got, obviously, great open water fishing for trout and salmon. Um, but if you've got a smaller boat and you don't want to come out here in the big pond, there's also a multitude of lakes up here that have great inland fishing. Portage Lake, for example, has got great walleye fishing in it. Uh, not too far from here is Lake, is Lake Ogebic, just a short drive from here. And, of course, that's world-class uh, world walleye and smallmouth fishing as well, and yellow perch. The boat we're in today is an STX 2050. It's made by StarCraft. It's the perfect size boat for doing this kind of fishing. It's kind of that, you know, normal walleye size boat, 20 foot, got a 100 inch beam on it, but it's the perfect machine to be able to come out here and catch these fish. And the cool thing about this fishery is it's not a big boat fishery. You can catch these fish with just a small amount of tackle, and they fight so hard. Scoop them, Dad. That's, That's a cool nice one. fish. That's a beautiful cool one. That's a bigger one, man. Look at that first. Early summer cold. That's a very nice fish, dude. The cool thing about the scum line fish is when you're on fish, it's fast and furious. Boards are going back and you're catching a lot of fish. But a lot of times you'll come right out of that group of fish that's feeding. So when you get through that, you're gonna catch a couple of fish, you gotta whip right back around and go back on them again. So we just took two fish out of that group, we're gonna spin around and get another one. As long as we've got a re-rig, I might as well show you how to hitch up a planer board here, the offshore board for this presentation. All I'm doing is grabbing the line in my finger and I'm spinning it a few times to create some loops. Now I've got the backing line in my hand, that's what I'm talking about here. Once I put it into the front release, you see I've got that little loop of line right there. Then I'm gonna reach back and there's a second release on the board. I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna put the line in that release. And it's a little different because this line release here has got a pin in it. And the reason I want that pin in there is because when this board does trigger from the front, the board's gonna still be hung on the line just like that. That way we can trip it and reel it in. Now if we catch a fish on that outside board, I'll trip that let it slide to the back and reel it in, and we never got to clear the inside line. It's a very slick method. And that's the reason we use offshore boards is because there's so many ways that these boards can be rigged. You can use them for walleye, you can use them for trout and salmon, pike, crappie, you name it, anything you troll for, you can catch on an offshore board. There he nice, is. nice fish. Probably wondering, why do I need to go to all the trouble of using lead core line and putting them on planer boards and doing all that? Well, really what it boils down to is a lot of these fish are high in the water column. 
And in order to catch these fish without spooking them, we really have to get our gear out to the side. But we still need to get down to depth as well. Lead core is a very efficient way of getting us down to depth and you're not going to beat the efficiency of a planer board for getting your lures out to the side. When you put the two together, it's a one-two punch that's actually this deadly on open water species, not just trout and salmon, but walleye and many other species as well. There we go. Nicely done. All right. You know, Cojos, they're not the biggest fish in the Great Lakes, but they got to be the tastiest. Um, lures that have a lot of green and a lot of blue in them and a little chartreuse are usually top picks. And if you get into some steelhead, you're going to want to pick a lure that's got a little bit of orange on it. There he nice is. Cool. Nice fish. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 411. A fitting end to our Keweenaw Peninsula adventure, how about some salmon on the grill? Beautiful coho. Thanks again for joining us. <laughs> Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Evan Root Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Precision trolling data. The Troller's Bible now available in an app. Fish Niagara, USA, up close and powerful.